celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answer the Call on Overcomers TV. We're at NRB 2021, brought to you by Frank Speech, Mike Lindell, the Lindell Foundation. We are so excited to be here. With me is my good friend, Art Haba, the founder of Core 300. Art, thank you so much for spending some time with our viewers. Yeah, yeah. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on your show. It's such a thrill to be here at the show and to see all the things God's doing. Yeah, yeah. God is good. He's in a team building, and we've been talking for years. Why don't you give our viewers a little backstory? I know you're the founder for Core 300. Yes. Tell our viewers a little bit of how God put on your heart to, uh, to launch the ministry and, and okay. share a little bit. Well, it really wasn't about launching, but it was uh, 1977. I woke from a dream, so I was in my mid-20s. Mid it was a very disturbing dream, very painful dream. Um, I woke up with a burden on my chest like an elephant's foot, and I'd never felt anything like this before or since. So I knew that God was at work doing something. And so I got out of bed, three in the morning, ran down the hall so I wouldn't wake up my wife, and put my face into the couch and howled and wept and wept, and it hurt so bad. I thought my heart was gonna burst. And so after that, uh, the burden began to lift. Maybe 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. It was time and stop. And I began to, to feel the burden lift, and then it was replaced by a presence that I can identify now as Father God yeah. um, through the Holy Spirit. And he said, my son, I have allowed you for just a few moments to feel the second-by-second -second pain that I feel on earth for the fatherless. And I've shared it with you because I'm calling you to partner with me as a father to the fatherless. And that's wow. where it started. Amen. That's where it started. That's, that's amazing. So, you know, God meets you right where you're at. He gives you a, a vision, a burden. Yeah. And now, you know, he doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called, right? So talk about that. I mean, 40 years. Yeah. And it was just in this last year that I realized that that had call, and you could say that it had been fulfilled, but we're just getting started. Yeah. And that's because we began measuring the ministry results, began measuring the ministry results in uh, Kenya and Uganda, where we're doing a lot of our work right now. And we uh, actually interviewed, we didn't interview, I'm sorry, we did, um, we did these confidential surveys of the wives of both pastors and inmates to find out if the changes, the transformation stories we're hearing from them echoes inside the walls of their hut in their home. And it did. Wow. And so I realized that now, I mean, Lord, you can take me any time. I mean, you always could take me any time. Right. But there's a sense of fulfillment, and yet, ready, get set, go. Um, one of the things that did spur me on, it was a confirmation that I should move closer towards the ministry. My pastor at the time, uh, and still my pastor personally, is Pastor Jack Hayford. Dr. Hayford now. Yeah, great minister, yeah. Part of a, a little church that I watch explode. <laughs> got involved uh, wow. from the age of 19 to 32. And during those years, he became my spiritual father. Right, yeah. So that was a, a, a powerful time of change. During that time, I lost my dad in a violent accident. Wow. And God stepped into the hole in my heart and said, I'm now your father. So I had this personal father experience right. and now father to the fatherless that set my direction. And the only place you're gonna go then is back to seminary or Bible college. Now, I already had a degree in biology. Right. And so I wanted to move towards ministry and Pastor Jack advised me in that. I went to uh, Life Pacific and got equipped. And right. then I rolled into pastoral ministry after that for yeah. 14 years. Yeah, that's amazing. Core 300, how did you come up with the name? And uh, talk about the vision, the mission, the heartbeat of the ministry. Yeah, thanks. So, so Core 300, um, what was a, a, a conjunction between 300 and I had just been given a, you know, the, the whole movement started with the revelation and insight that I had seen in my study of the book of, of um, Judges chapter six, seven, and eight, which many people know is the, is the story of Gideon. 
And in that, there was 32,000 men that showed up in a crisis that said, I'm ready to rumble. I'm ready to stand. I'm ready to rescue our country against the Midianites. But all said and done, after God went through some sifting, there was only 300 men that were selected. But right. it was the 300 that did a good deal of the fighting in the beginning. Right. And even the beginning, when they were dispersed and destroying them, so the, the enemy was destroying themselves, they, Gideon's group hadn't even raised a sword yet. They were just holding pots and blowing horns. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so Amazing story. It's yeah. a beautiful story. And, but yeah. the thing about spiritual warfare that most people don't understand, and there's so many songs and book and, uh, and uh, articles that come out and sermons that are preached that says, God does all the fighting. God does all the fighting. But that's only in one of the situations of the battles of Israel. In every single case, he said, get ready. Be prepared. Put Good on the point. shields. Good point. And you got to go. You got to insert yourself into harm's way, and I will show up and we'll do it. Together. together. Amen. Same Amen. thing with Moses. We'll do it together. Gideon, that's, that's you good. and I together. That's good. And so we've got to get serious about learning fighting skills and warfare skills as well as awareness, particularly as men, where we're, where we're the watchmen for our own families. Yeah, spiritual priests, right? We're the head, and, and it's our job to protect, exactly. provide, and, and, you know, be right. that spiritual covering. It's that's a, good it's, stuff. It's a big ministry. It's yeah. a big ministry. Just taking yeah. care of your home. So talk about... How is the Lord using Core 300 to share the gospel? Talk about evangelism efforts. Well, well, our, our effort, to go back to your last question for just a moment, our efforts are specifically we stay razor focused yeah. and laser focused. <laughs> Both terms work, I guess. Right. On, on, on calling men, awakening them by the Holy Spirit through the Gideon story. It does. It awakens men. They're drawn to it. And then equipping them, training them with three semesters or three years of curriculum, 12 weeks each, with work to do between the courses to, to implement, to practice what they learn, not just learn it and go on to the next thing. We don't believe in that. You got to put it into practice, just like anything else in, world, in, in our lives. And so put it into practice and then move on into the next level until the third level, the king takes a man from a servant leader, which he learned during the priest, that I identify myself as a son of the father, adopted, and also a servant leader as my job description to my family. The leadership is important, but so is the servanthood. It's Amen. an attitude. That's good. So yeah. then that servant leader is practiced in the home. It's practice at work. It's practice in the church and service. And then they're ready to graduate to the next course, which is I become a leader maker. I am a man looking for other men to mentor them and to develop them because that's my calling. Yeah, it's that's not good. to be the boss. It's not to be the head guy. Right. You know, we got we it's got enough of those. It's It's older men teaching younger men, older women exactly. teaching younger men. Yeah, that's, all, that's multiplication. All, yeah. It, it follows Jesus's three years. The three semesters follow Jesus's three years in ministry. Yeah. That's a model. That's good. That's yeah. good. Evangelism, discipleship, they well, go hand in hand. But let's talk about one at a time. Well, when we started out for the first three years, from 2010 to 2013, actually practicing, we were we we brought this course to 200 churches and. Uh, maybe another few dozen small groups and uh, a couple of schools of ministry. It was all about the U.S. It was started in a local church that was in crisis, and then we rolled it out and to see if it would catch because we saw such a miraculous intervention of the Holy Spirit to, to lift this church in a crisis that I was a part of. And so there wasn't a whole lot of evangelism going on. And it wasn't on my mind. It was about discipleship. That's the missing secret sauce in the churches, right? And so... We were doing discipleship, but when we, when God had us export that, uh, in 2013, we did our first conference in Kenya. I didn't even know where Kenya was in Africa. I knew it was in Africa, so this wasn't a lifelong calling. Matter of fact, four of us had never been to Africa. Most of the group had never flown outside the United States. We were just regular guys doing our jobs. But when we arrived in Africa, 611 pastors and bishops showed up in a, in a mud floor church packed smelly and for four days I got to watch them go through an incredible visual transformation yeah. and God used the warrior course which we did at that time and we still are doing every day now in in Africa well the warrior course cool. to free them from tribalism and to and to bring them in as the 300 yeah. and it's spread from there to now we've trained about 40th uh, in Africa about 35,000 men but 
Wow. About 40% of them are prisoners, and that's another story. Yeah. So in all of that, we've seen about uh, 16,000 men that have come to Christ. Praise God. The that's interesting awesome. thing is 30% of all of the pastors are coming to Christ. Praise God. Because we're telling them the Gideon story, and because they're tribal. Right. They can relate. They hear the Bible in a whole other way. They're not right. hearing the Western version of, say, their sinner's prayer. Right. God's getting into their heart through the Gideon story where they feel like they're alone and hiding and disqualified. And then they find God, not in the way of the West, but in the way of actually the Bible's original intent. Yeah. It's that's, exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. So like I said, it's evangelism, it's discipleship. Absolutely. They're answering the call. That's right. the name of the show. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we're here in the United States and we're so wrapped up in our issues and our world and our so own. So different. You know, and there's some of this great harvesting that's happening right. around the world. So, exactly. yeah, talk exactly. about, uh, you know, ways that Christians can get involved and be a part of this harvest and, and raising up that next generation of, of Christians. Well, the, um, uh, the story of what happened is that we didn't know what we were doing. None of us had, m had missiology degrees. Uh, I was the only one that had a theology degree. None of us had any experience in missions or going on. None of us had been on a missions trip. God just dropped us out of a plane into the bushland of Kenya. And in doing that, all we did was deliver the course with an interpreter. Right. And from then on, when I saw what God did and we saw it, we knew that this was a calling that was being redirected from the United States temporarily right. into this part of the world. And it turned out to be a glorious pilot project. Right. But the thing is, we had to listen for each step. We never knew what to do next. We had no preconceived idea what to do next. So it started with the, the pastors and bishops being trained, and it makes sense. So you leaven a nation. Our goal was to transform the nation of Kenya. It's a big goal, a big, hairy goal. Right. If you can, what if you can use, see, use the gospel to transform a nation and practically be able to measure that? And that's what's happening. That's right. what's happening. So the pastors and bishops, well, the, the chaplains from the prisons were coming, and when an opportunity came up within their organization, they, drew, they literally filled out the forms and had me sign to apply for a, uh, a grant opportunity, not a grant, sorry, to apply for a, a partnership right. with the Kenyan prison systems. And they brought us to the table, and out of 19 other NGOs, we were chosen. Nice. And that year, our budget was $25,000 worldwide. Wow. And they gave us the entire prison system, 109 prisons, 65,000 inmates, and they said, you have to train all of the employees too. Wow. So it was all set up from 2010 before I even thought of Kenya. God had set this up with an RFP that was sitting on someone's desk. It was just such a God thing. Wow, it's amazing. And so we've been asked to transform the inside of these prisons, but now that's evolved into when the prisoners are released. And because of training so many thousands over periods of years of pastors, they went in and bought transformation and broke the tribal spirit in their own churches. And now these churches that hated inmates, the part, tribalism says you gotta hate prisoners because they're different, they're exiles. Now their hearts were turned to welcome them. So now a whole network of over 200 churches have signed up to be sanctuary churches and that completes the whole loop. And so the whole movement was ordained and, and, and created by God's Spirit. And we're just following yeah. and making the outlines, watching the process, and right. now it's ready to be exported to other nations. Yeah, that's awesome. So we need people to get involved. Talk about that. Oh, yeah. Gosh, there's lots of ways to get involved. First of all and foremost, you know we're in the dark continent, so there's always a need pre-trip. And we now have 100, we have 130, uh, excuse me, we have, a, we have 190 coordinators that are now trained and they're doing all of the work all the ministry the training of the pastors the training of the prisoners even a, a bunch of holistic ministries including training we've trained 16,000 men in 21st century farming and their farms are exploding their income is raising through our wife surveys we're seeing income rising in 95 percent of those homes this is what all of the you know all of the UNICEF and all the United Nations and the Big Gates Foundation this is what they're aiming for but you got to start at the heart, which was tribalism. You have to start at the heart of the father wound. 
And we want people to come and see, first of all. Right. We, if you come and see, we're going to put you to work. There's going to be a place where you're going to find fulfillment in your own skill. Yeah, that's... Secondly, we need that we need that prayer. We yeah. need that prayer together with us. We want to grow a real strong prayer team. Anybody who feels like they want to be a car, part of a committee that leads that. Right. And then thirdly, we need people to give. Yeah. We want partners to come alongside that we can call partners in ministry, true partners, right. because it where your money is, yeah. is, is your heart. Right. And where your money is, is it express your life. So giving in ministry, financially, of your time, of the abilities that you have, we're always looking to expand, for example, our marketing presence. We're very weak in the U.S. and how to do it right. And so we'll, well, there's lots of opportunities for people to come along, be, be a part of our team. You can be a significant player in what God is doing in this planet I'll tell you, it was, um, it was Henry Blackaby that said, if you want to find out what God has for your life, yeah. find the river that, where God is moving on earth. And jump, jump in. in it. Yeah, there you and go. And so this Amen. is a river opportunity for you. Yeah. You don't have to go to Africa to do it. Amen. So, Some yeah. people are called to go and others are called to support those who go. Absolutely. That's just Absolutely. the beautiful way the body of Christ Absolutely. gets involved. Absolutely. So I love asking people, why do you do what you do and what gets you up in the morning? What's driving you wow. outside of the Holy well, Spirit? you can see... You know, there is the fever that you feel personally, and I don't spend a lot of time dipping into that pool, but God makes sure that he says, you see, son, you followed me here, you followed me there. Yeah, you fell down there a few times. You know, I had to upside the head you a couple of times, but you know, we're doing this together, just like he did with Gideon, just like he did with Moses, just like he did with Paul. And he's given me some rock solid, strong men and a couple of women be behind us to work with us. And so the joy has to do, let I me mean, just think about it. Think about the joy of someone who, as a very young man who didn't know squat, God says, I'm calling you to be a father to the fatherless. And believe me, I don't call that, that title right. only belongs to God. Yeah, amen. But as a, as a facilitator of the father heart of God to others, yeah. 190,000 children now have an active father in their life just because we said yes to go to Kenya. That's awesome. And in that, you can't have more joy. Yeah. He's the father of the fatherless. And that's, yeah. that means you've got a ticket, not just a ticket to get into heaven. You now are a card-carrying member of God's family. There is no greater place you can achieve. Right. There's no CEO position. There's no acquisition of wealth. There's no lottery. Right. There's no place in talent that you could go yeah. other than to be a living, walking and, and, and acting out your life as a son or a daughter of God. Yeah. And that's yeah. the joy. And now, you know what? That's the core of my joy, too. Amen. He gets, he, I get to do this. Yeah. You know? He yeah, keeps me alive. Yeah, we get to do this. Yeah, I mean, the enemy's done a good job talking to churches. You don't have to go to church. I'm like, you don't have to go. You actually get to go yeah. and hang out with God's people doing God's stuff. That's and when right. God's on the move, that's it's right. It's better than Disney World. It's it's adventurous. That's it's right. an adventure, right? That's right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. final question. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today, Art? Well, yes. Thanks for asking. There's the interconnection of two things that I want, I want people to know about. I want people to begin understanding. When you walk into a culture as alien as Kenya, as Uganda, East Africa, there are certain things that are always going on there that keep them what's called the dark continent. It keeps them broken. It keeps the corruption in place. And it's this. The tribal culture has a list of values that are identical to the values of Satan. The tribalism um, glorifies corruption. They tell stories to one another of how they stole this, how they took that. And they slap each other on the back. Now, I'm talking about the men in particular. Right. Tribalism is universal in that it batters women and abuses children. Tribalism is a hiding place for larceny. It's a place where a man's heart becomes darkened. And within the tribe, there's this idea of banishment. You're always a heartbeat away from being banished from the tribe, which means you can do no more business, that you don't have a name, that if you stay in the town, you will be ignored. No one will speak to you. It is horrific. And so because of fear of banishment, men will beat their wives and they'll do it every week. Yeah. And pastors, this is, I'm talking about pastors. We found like 99 out of 100 regularly beat their wives. Wow. When the, when the wives were surveyed, 99 out of 100 that we surveyed, their husband had never struck them again. 
and was kind to them. Wow. Their marriage was reversed. They became romantic. Yeah. Men don't know the words, I love you. They're speaking those words to their children, speaking it to their wives. They're playing with their kids. A tribal man is forbidden. You see, Satan hates fatherhood. He hates Father God. Right. Anything associated with the DNA of God right. that he put into Adam, Satan hates. And so we need to understand the strategies of hell and stop throwing money at it and money at orphans. It's we got going to deal for the with, heart. It's a heart issue. It's well, an inside the orphan job. The maker is the tribal man. Right. That's where orphans come from. Right. We talk about um, the, the, the trafficking that goes on. Where do those children and, and young girls come from? Where do the women come from? They're being pushed out of their home by tribal men. But right. when the man's heart is transformed, right. He reverts to becoming the man he always wanted to be. It's hidden in them. Right. They, they come and move close to Christ. They begin loving themselves. Amen. And, and that flows, and it begins transforming communities. It's transforming prisons. It's transforming an entire county in Kenya right now. And our Amen. focus in Africa is we're not leaving until we see the transformation of the nation of Kenya as a new model. Amen. And That's then we good. see it coming to the U.S. in places like there's one community called the Prison Inner City. That's one community, and it's tribal. It's completely tribal, and right. they have and tribalism. Gangs, destroys. it's all tribal. Well, gangs, cartels, they're all tribal. It's a tribal right. model. Right, Even right. the old mafia stories, it's tribal. Right, right, yeah. And so it breaks. It, it can it can bring the same deliverance and the same transformation to a gang-infested community. There's over 500 just in L.A. County. Right. 500 gangs. They all have street boundaries, and they control everything. The right. cops know it. Right. And what happens is that there's no fathers, yeah. see? Fa uh, tribal, tribalism destroys fatherhood and right. destroys the family. But they so need, and we they feel be aware the need to be connected. That's, that's yeah, powerful. They, they need, well, there's only one cure for tribalism. Yeah. It's being welcomed into the family of God. Amen. That's yeah. why we're and adopted. It, and and it that's works. good stuff. That'll it preach. Works. That'll preach. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. Hey, stay tuned. we got some more interviews coming up here at NRB 2021, Art Haba Core 300. Thank you for answering the call. What a pleasure. Yeah, a and pleasure. Uh, man, Amen. there's a lot of work to do. I appreciate your heart, your passion for ministry. And uh, hey, get involved. And uh, we just love to see what God's doing in ministries like yours. And, Amen. And uh, we're praying for you, and we're going to get involved. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews here back at Grapevine, Texas, NRB 2021. Keep watching. Horizon Media Studios, producers of the television series Answering the Call, is looking for Christ-centered, Bible-believing ministries to feature ministries like gospel rescue missions, homeless shelters, children's homes, Bible colleges and universities, mission sending agencies, pregnancy centers, and more. These are the doers of the word that James talks about. The Great Commission is to share the gospel and make disciples. Jesus taught us to pray the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest, and the harvest is ripe. We want to raise awareness of ministries and also mobilize the body of Christ to get involved and answer the call. Tell us about your favorite ministry. Email us at info at atctv.org. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. The Go Anywhere pillow is really comfortable, so that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper for the first time has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. 
I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the my pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. My pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to mypillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com.